Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. This is the promised second edition of the three uh, app reviews that I promised you. Uh, we, we covered the Sibley app birds last time, and today we're going to cover the Merlin app, a very, very pro popular app out there. Well, not the least of which because it's free, and it's from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. So there's no question about the quality of, of sounds and uh, they are, the pictures are terrific and, and it's got an easy help guide. So we're going to review that today. And that way, if you've downloaded it and you've tried it and you're kind of confused or you can't quite get the hang of it, hopefully I can clarify some of that for you. So the Merlin app. All right. We're going to bring up the camera here. Oh, yeah. Facing down on my desktop here. And I've got the my iPhone there open, and this is my my birding app subfolder on the front of my uh, that iPhone. And easily, just like, just like before, all we have to do is tap that icon, and it opens up to this home screen. And one of the cute things that it does for you is it gives you a bird of the day every day, which is really nice. Uh, mine today is a great horned owl. And then across those three buttons around the the, the center of the screen there are the three things that you can do uh, to that are the most used. The green is highlighted in the center for sound, sound recordings. And this is where this app, Claim to Fame, came to be. And that is, I, always, I called it when it first came out, Shazam for Birds. So if you've used the Shazam app to identify a song on the radio, um, then it, it goes through and it comes up with the the song and the artist, that's kind of what this is. This is it, it, it listens for birds. And whenever it hears uh, the, the birds are recording, and actually the microphone's quite sensitive. And so it picks up birds. Uh, and, and especially for me, it doesn't have great hearing. And it, identifies, it picks up things that I don't hear a lot of the times. Um, and, and again, uh, I'm, well, it, I show you, all you got to do is, of course, is touch that. And it starts listening. Well, down here in my basement, this not going to hear any birds, so there's no good in uh, keeping that going. But what it does is this recording, and you see those uh, bars going across there. If there were birds out there vocalizing, it was hearing it, you would see the little up and down pattern uh, of their uh, their sounds that they're making. And then just below the, the green button, it starts uh, listing birds that it's hearing. Now, remember, this app is not perfect. I don't, it, it, and it does make mistakes. It's getting better it, it, you know, year by year, month by month. It, it, it's getting more sophisticated and able to filter out things and, and hear birds. But it is making suggestions. And I think that's important for you to remember is that it, and it puts little uh, colored dots beside birds that it's not sure about. And, uh, and for someone who does bird counts and it does uh, the data has to be submitted uh, to authorities to, to count and keep up with bird populations. It's very frustrating for the people that do that for when someone uh, submits a, a sighting and it's and it's a, of a bird that really shouldn't be in your area and you then they ask you uh, what documentation do you have and someone says because Merlin said it was there and that is not. Uh, the criteria for submitting a, an official bird sighting because those the people keeping up with it know that it can make mistakes. And so that it, if it's saying cardinal and, you know, Carolina wren and, and birds that are really common, that's one thing. But if it says uh, a Browers Miller bird or something which you know, doesn't even occur on this continent, then it does make mistakes like that. I've seen it do it myself. So the, the, the word about this, about the recording part of this program is – if you something that you're not sure about, if you if you're something that you think, oh, I don't know that, try to get a visual confirmation of it. And there's a, I mean, it has a, a great library and it has ways of helping you identify birds. We're going to get back to that. But remember, the 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 sound recordings are not perfect, but they're great. And and if you hear, if it's telling you there's a chickadee calling, and you look out of your feeder, and all of a sudden the chickadee lands on it, like oh that was him probably calling as he came in. It's a great learning tool that way. It helps you uh, confirm your sighting or that the sound that you heard, and 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 it's it's done wonders for teaching people. So we definitely um, uh, the birds and pictures in there, and of course recordings of each of them. So you sort it for your area. 
So let's go back here. And we're going to back to there, back to the original. Okay, the photo of the screen. And you see it's got uh, the photos. You can submit a picture. If you've taken a picture, you can upload a photo to the app, and it will identify or try to identify it for you. And then it's got the step-by-step -step identification process, which is, if you remember, Sibley's. Well, the first thing you do is you uh, pick where you are and when you are. That's the same thing we did with Sibley. We told it where we were, and and it's going to narrow the the birds down. Okay, so uh, no, it's not February 10th, so we have to change that. September, what is it, 22nd today? Third, 23rd today, I think. All right, so then we touch that button there, and it submits it. Then it wants to know what size of bird that you saw. Oh, you know, big like a goose or a crow size or a robin size. Let's go here. Let's go with a smaller bird. Robin size. Okay, so we'll go there next. What was the overall uh, color of the bird? Well, let's say it was mostly gray. So we're going to tell it that. Was it swimming? Was it at, uh, soaring over high, uh, high? Was it up in a tree or in a bush on the ground? Oh, let's see. I think I saw this bird on the ground. So I'll click that, and then it's collecting the data. It's been entering all your sightings, your your criteria, and it's bringing up a handful of birds that you think it would. In this case, it it definitely thinks it's a robin. Uh, and if you if it is your bird, you can click it and say yes, that's my bird. Yay! Do you want to report it to eBird? We're not going to do that because we're just playing here today, and learning. So, but there are other birds that usually submit. So, oh, a morning dove, it could have been. A flicker, it could have been a brown thrasher. All these are, you know, great birds that spend a lot of time on ground on the ground. Starlings, and so it gives you several choices that you can go through. So that's the the identification pro part of this app. I'm sorry, I keep having to go back, back, back. All right, and then uh, you know, it, one of the great things about it, if if you're uh, keeping lists like that in your backyard, or if you go on a bird hop. <clears throat> excuse me, and you're keeping list, it definitely uh, it has a place where you can sign in. I didn't sign in. So I can uh, enter my email and password, and it'll bring up all my sightings that I've entered in through through the Merlin app. So that's a great thing for you. And, and so you, it, it does kind of keep up with your life list. But I wanted to get back to the pictures. Uh, again, this is sorted. Uh, and so... Uh, let's see. Let's go to a different box. Oh, okay. There's so the J-size bird. All right. Okay. They're in that area. No, I didn't enter all my my criteria. Yeah, back to the birds. Let's see. Wow. This would be out of my out of the ordinary. But I thought I, it was gray. And I went, wow, could it have been that bird? This is a Canada J that used to be called gray J. But it does not occur. It gives you like, a lot of good facts. And it's got several songs that you can listen to. And then it's got your range map. Shows you where they are. And I can go, wait a minute. That's not my bird because I don't live anywhere close to there. Okay, stop. There you go. Sorry. So it gives you their, the, the range maps. It's got the songs. It's a great app, and it has a lot of things, a lot of, lot of teaching tools, that's for sure. So you can set it for your area. And then, of course, if, you, if you're on, out on a bird hike, you, know, you can enter your, your, your sightings in the field as well as in your backyard. So a lot of people use it, but it's a great learning tool. And I don't want to, again, I, I know I warn a lot about, uh, the mistakes it makes, but I can't emphasize enough that it is a really wonderful app. And it's a great way to learn birds in your backyard or out in the field. Just know that you, it, it, if it tells you a bird, if you can get that visual confirmation or you can bring out the picture of it and it's, oh yeah, there it is sitting on that pole right there. That really helps uh, the learning of, uh, of the birds and your bird sounds and associating sounds with the, the faces, if you will. Um, but you again, Merlin app, everyone should have it on their phone. They really it, now it doesn't pick up all birds. I we have 
it's funny. I, you know, I, I, I know phones are different, but when I'm on a, we're on a bird hike and I have a group with me and oh, maybe three or four people will have their Merlin apps open. And it's amazing how one app will hear certain birds that that other phone doesn't, or they're calling them two different birds. Uh, and they, it, there are birds that confuse it a lot. I, I, I mean, to tell you, uh, we had that happen a couple of weeks ago on one of our bird hikes. The same bird we kept singing, and the app kept switching between. I think it, it may have been chickadee and uh, and uh, titmouse. It kept switching back and forth, and it was only the one bird singing right there beside us. And I've also been on hikes where. You know, it was picking up a distant bird uh, away from us, but there was a house wren singing right beside us, and it wasn't picking it up. So, it, like I said, it's not infallible. It's just a great tool to use. So, you know, download it, experiment with it. It's wonderful uh, a teaching tool, and it'll really expand your bird knowledge. So great. So, that was a great idea for a program. I, like I said, I know people love the Merlin app, and I don't blame them. And it, 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 I love, I'm, of course, I'm in favor of anything that teaches and it helps you out. So helps you identify those birds. So thank you so much for suggesting that. We are going to do uh, the, the eBird app uh, probably in a couple weeks. Um, and until then, you know, send in ideas for, for programs you want me to talk about because it, it's so fun. And I know uh, you guys get uh, – information. I hope you're learning from it. That's what it's all about. So get out and out of your backyard and go explore birds. That Merlin app will help you out a lot. So thank you so much. Until next time, let's talk birds.